Hello, everybody. Well, oh, and pardon how I look, because I still don't feel great, but I'm too excited about this dying with lichens to um, fuss about how I look before I videotape. Um, I'm still collecting lichen, and I should say that um, I watched a wonderful video, which I'll try to link up here if I remember, about a mother and daughter who went out foraging and found some lichen, and uh, were using it for a dye bath. It gives a lovely yellow. I mean, look at this. Why would you ever think that that would give you yellow? A nice, soft, buttery yellow. So anyway, um, and I did look up what type of lichen this is, and I think it is, oh, oh dear, what was it? Hypo, oh dear. Well, I don't remember. I'll put it, I'll put it down there, I, and if I, I have to get on my laptop to find it, and uh, anyway, it's buried under lichen and wool. Um, but it's a particular type of lichen. The, the older lady, the mother, did say that um, to soak the lichen, so it's not supposed to be dry, it's supposed to be wet. She also said to make sure to remove the lichen from all of the tree bark or wood that it's attached to. So I'm going to have, that's the most tedious thing I think is going to be to go and take all the tree bark off of this because almost every piece is attached to a piece of bark. Oh, we'll see. Some of them are not attached to any bark at all. This is all windfall off of the pine tree, and I didn't even check the big pine tree in the pasture. There may be more out there. Now, Nancy, one of my viewers out there, thank you, Nancy, for your comment, to be careful when dying um, not to have the water too hot. I don't want to, I'm not doing avocado right now, though, Nancy, but still, um, I was thinking, you know, I don't want to shock the wall. So I'm looking in that Williamsburg book about how to make sure that you um, gently adjust your wool into your um, dye bath. Now, before I launch into that nice wool that I ordered from the woolery, I thought I would pull some. Uh, I, I've got wool everywhere. Uh, when, in England, when they say wool, they mean yarn. Over here, when we say wool, we just mean something that looks like that. Now, I think, I did clean this. It hasn't been picked totally, but it's picked pretty well. And I think this is the Cheviot wool from my brother's farm, okay? So I thought I would do a small lichen bath. I'm taking some of this Cheviot and I am separating it just like this, kind of into, a, I mean, it's not even a roving. I'm not gonna spin it or anything yet. Um, because I'm, I don't want to have to spin it and ply it and all that stuff. I want to go ahead and start because huh, I'm impulsive, of course. Can you tell? So I'd like to try to do this today. And if I ruin a little bit of this, it won't make any difference. And if I use up some of this lichen, I've got a whole pasture full of lichen. So I'm just kind of um, elongating the strands. Um and I'm hoping this will keep it from getting too tangled into a wad when it's in the bath. Now, the lady, the older lady in the video, and I would encourage you to go watch it. It's a short video and very fun. Um, they're outside doing dyeing. But um, they did go ahead and put uh, the lichen into the dye bath with the wool. And I cannot imagine the trouble of picking all of that lichen out of, after picking all the VM out of this already, I can't imagine doing it again with lichen, so I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably going to um, soak the lichen in its water and get it nice and um, nice and yellow, and probably put a half cup of vinegar in there, too. That's supposed to get the pH down to about a four, because it tends to have a high pH. Um, and I'm also going to soak um, very gently soak this wool in water, slowly warming it up and not agitating it at all, of course. I just drop some lichen in my lap. Because um, um, the Williamsburg book 
and I'll put a picture of it here or something. Um, it says that um, if you soak your, your wool first, it will receive the dye more readily. All right, well, time to stop yapping. Time to start dying. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> D-Y-E-I-N-G. All right, I've got enough wool to give it a start. We'll see. And then after I get it, uh, see if I get it in a nice color, I'll let it dry, and then I'll maybe spin it up. I do have that um, <clears throat> Malabrigo Noob on my wheel right now, but I just spun up some more of it. I'm going to try to get it off my wheel so that this uh, natural dyed wool, uh, whatever wool it is that I'm dyeing naturally, I'll be able to, um, to spin it up quickly. All right. This, oh, hush, Lucy. Lucy is asking for food, and she's already had food. Um, this lichen bath is going to simmer for an hour. And as you see, I think it's already starting to get a yellow tint. I'm, I think I'm going to relegate this pot to being a dying pot, because it's pretty old. And now I am taking my Cheviot fiber and just gently, very gently soaking it in nice warm water. And... Um, let it sit there till it's time for it to go into there. Now this has been simmering for about 30 minutes and the color, the color seems quite beautiful and dark. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take um, the lichens out of there and start my bath. Okay. I strained out uh, as much of the lichen as I could get out. It's not a very big bath. It's been steaming, so some of the water's gone. I put in about two tablespoons of the um, white vinegar to get the, the pH lower. And now I'm going to very gently place my roll into the bath and just press it in. Oh, how fun is that? Let me bring you a little closer. Now, I don't have, I don't have uh, the heat on that right now. I might turn it to a simmer in just a second. But let's look at the, look at the color. Ooh, isn't that fun? I'm so excited. All right, I'll bring it back. I think I'm just going to turn the burner off and let that slowly cool from this steamy simmer um, over like the next hour and then take it out. If you're wondering what this is back here, this is just a pot of water with some cinnamon sticks in it. I'm trying to get some moisture into the house for my bronchitis. But I'm so excited about this. I wonder if I lift it up. I don't think it's doing much yet. Maybe a little bit. I'm I'm way over eager. Can you tell? <laughs> Okie dokie. I can't wait any longer. Let's gently lift this out of here. See what it looks like. We put it onto this plate. It's more of an orange than a yellow. Is there any wool left in there? I don't think so. All right, oh, there's a little piece of lichen hanging around. Ooh. Now, the, the older lady on the video said that with lichen, you don't need a mordant, which is lovely. I do have some alum, 
now, but um, of course it's better not to use one than to have to use one. And we're going to need to, once it's not quite so hot, we're going to press this, get the water out, and get it dried. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, there's a good bit of lichen left in there. But not as much as if I hadn't strained it out. Oh, how beautiful. I love that color. What do you think? Well, this is a good experiment. I'm going to do a bit of this kind of thing before I launch into that nice fiber. But I hope you're enjoying coming on this journey with me. Um, we will see how color fast this is and, and um, how, how strong of a color it is when we get it dried and everything. But I'm quite excited about this. Who knew? I don't think, I know I haven't done lichen before. I think I realized that I could just do turmeric for an orangey yellow, and so I did that. But this is, I think, more fun. Okay, there we go. Now let's just hope that Lucy doesn't jump up there and find it. That would be quite tragical. Love that color. Hmm. Can't wait to spin that up. In the warmth of my studio today, it didn't take this fiber any time at all to dry on this screen. Now, this is not a lot of fiber, obviously. This was just kind of a test today um, with lichen. And so I decided I would put this um, on my hand carters just to kind of get any residual lichen, dried lichen off there, and to even out the color because where the... Um, you can see the tips, the, all the dark spots, these are the tips of the locks, and where the, the, where the wool is more compressed, the color is darker, so they just needed to be opened up. I thought, well, I'll just cart it a little bit, and look what happened after this first, this first row lag. It is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if this is what um, the Wild Dyer lady meant when she said that there's a luminescence about this, but man, that is just gorgeous. I do think this is Cheviot. My brother's wall. But I'm now, I'm quite excited about this. I may have to do up the rest of uh, what I had. I don't even know what that was down in that. I don't even know why it was down there. I'm sure I, I cleaned it. Um, and then I must have not known what I wanted to do with it. So, uh, but I think I know what I want to do with it now because it is absolutely beautiful. It goes from that to that. Wow. I don't know if you can see it here, but it is quite exciting. 